Moths are masters of camouflage. They are so good at blending in. Today, we're gonna learn how to play hide and seek, camouflage version with your family. The only things you'll need for today's project is a piece of paper. I'm actually using one that's already used on the other side, and I'm just gonna use the clean side. You'll need some scissors and some markers or crayons or colored pencils or paint, whatever you like to use. And then just a pen or a pencil to draw with. The first thing I'm gonna do is just draw a really basic moth shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you don't like drawing, you could always print out a moth outline or coloring sheet. I'm gonna draw two moths and I'm gonna do one that's a little bit easier to find or easier to color, and then one that's maybe a little more challenging. So once you're ready to color, you're going to choose a place around your house or maybe your yard where you want to hide your moths. And that's how you're going to choose the colors and textures that you use so that you can try to hide your moth and camouflage it with its surroundings. So I'm gonna color two moths here. I'm gonna choose one that's a little easier. It's mostly one solid color. And then the other one, I'm gonna do one that's a little more challenging. There's lots of ways that you can make this activity easier or harder. You can use moths that are bigger or really small. You can hide them in places that have patterns or places that have just one color. You can do it any way you'd like. Do you ever see moths around your house? What are they usually doing? Moths and butterflies look a lot alike, but there's a few ways you can tell the difference. Moths usually have very furry bodies and big feathery antenna and butterflies tend to have much smoother bodies and smoother antenna. Plus, at nighttime, you see moths, and during the day, you see butterflies. Sometimes people tend to think that butterflies are more beautiful and they might like them more, but moths are really important pollinators too. They do the same job that butterflies do, but in the nighttime. Once your moths are colored to blend in with their surroundings, you're gonna go ahead and cut them out. Did you know that both moths and butterflies have really long tongues? It's called a proboscis, and it works kind of like a straw. When they're not using it, it's curled up on their face, and then when they land on a flower to sip the nectar, they uncurl their proboscis and stick it down into the flower. When moths and butterflies fly from flower to flower, they get some pollen stuck to their bodies. And when they land on the next flower, some of the pollen from the other flower goes into the next one. And that is how plants make seeds. Moths, butterflies, and bees and all of our other pollinators are really important. They help us have the things that we need and help make a lot of the foods that we eat. So now that my moths are cut out, I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on them. You don't have to, you can also just set them down somewhere. You don't have to tape them to something, but the tape would help it stick, especially if you wanna put them on your wall. Once they're ready to go, we're gonna take them to their spots. So I made my blue one for this big yoga ball to blend in, and I made my tricky one for our counter. It doesn't totally blend in, but that's okay. And then you can take turns hiding and finding your camouflaged moths. 